Okay, we're recording. We're live. We're live. Hello, world. Welcome back. <laughs> uh, we've got the lovely Autumn Moran with us here today. She's very exciting, and she's in her lovely beach chair. I am. I am. It's a, a redo apartment renovation situation, so that's what I got. It's great. <laughs> Well, Autumn, I would love to hear how you even started in this business. Maybe what your first job was with cameras or why cameras in the first place? Okay. Um, I started this business kind of by accident. Um, I was working in advertising back in 2008 and they like, got laid off and everything got laid off. And, um, but at the time I was like going on as like the client on commercial shoots. And I like, I had a background in photography and, you know, and then, and so I knew I'd want aesthetically, but not really how to like express it to them, I guess. Um, so I wound up going to school when I got it off for film. And my first job in the industry was actually as an electric. Oh. Um, so I was in DC at the time and there are a lot more job trainings for like grips and electrics down there than there are for camera people. Okay. Um, because most jobs would like bring in a camera people, but they'd hire local Crips and Electrics. So that was sort of my first start, even though I, I always knew I wanted to do camera. That was definitely like, they kind of already, the guy always wanted that, but just, you know, money and experience and what have you. Um, so while I was in school, obviously I DP shorts and shot and all that stuff. And, um, and so I wound up taking the union test while I was still in DC. Cause like, I kind of knew I wanted to move to New York. I knew, you know, I didn't know when maybe, but I was like, you know, let me just, let me just do it. See what happens. So I did that. And then I was still in DC working mostly as an electric, but occasionally getting calls for jobs up here as a loader. And my first job up here was on the first season of Blacklist as a day player. Um, and I would like take the train up from DC in the morning and like, <laughs> crash my friend's couch and go back the next day. Like, that lasted for like a couple months until like I made the move actually up here. Um, in which case I had no work for like ever. And I wanted to do the reverse thing. I'm going to to DC and work as an electric and come back up here. That's wild. So uh, it took me a bit, but um, I would say like the first job that sort of really kicked off like my sort of like, I guess, career is that I am, um, I had, while I was in DC, I had worked as a camera PA on Captain America 2. And, and it was only a good two week unit, DC unit, but it was a great experience. And one of the, so this is, a, I didn't even know enough to like, like not do this. But so when I moved to New York, I didn't know enough to tell anyone in DC that I had done so. So like, one of the production managers down there, called me to load on the Madam Secretary pilot, which was shooting in DC for a couple of days. Okay. And she thought I was still in DC. And I was just like, I could totally can't because I just need any money and union work is like, that's all I want. So I, I went down to DC, crashed my friend's couch, like, I'm like, and then I met like so many good people, like David the May, Jane Fitzpatrick, like, and I was like, and we kind of hit it off, like, you know, on that shoot. And I was like, you see, I'm down here, but actually I'm up here. And, and then, like, basically that would have been in, like, the spring. And then, like, I, when I was in New York, I would keep, like, texting them or, like, just sort of, like, checking in, you know, doing a day play or all stuff, whatever. And then eventually, like, I think in October, they finally brought me out to day play. And, um... Brent Weichel and I actually were the two gay players on that, so, uh, and yeah, and then, you know, I got hired full time the second season, and that sort of is how that started, but it was like, it was definitely sort of an accident, and just geographical trickery on all levels. Yeah, that, that seems about right. Yeah. <laughs> I yeah. feel like there's a lot of those, like, kind of bizarre timings, and then just, it lines up. Yeah. Somewhere in there. Yeah, it really did, and um, it was really lucky. Like, Madam was a great show to work on for the most part, you know. Um, How many seasons did you end up working on that show? Six, all of them. I mean, oh, I, wasn't wow. full, okay. I wasn't full-time on all of them. I was full-time on season two, and then sort of, like, their main C camera for, like, 
couple seasons and then like season six I think I only was there like one day because oh, I was okay. on another show you know like but I, I, I touched it every every season that's pretty cool but, uh, when you started with madam were you were you loading I was loading yeah and then when you finished season six, were you operating? I was an oper well, I was operating on other shows. I wasn't operating on Madam. So I was really seeing them on then, but I had started season six to why I wasn't really good at all because like I'd started operating elsewhere. So yeah. But I was like, I'll still come play and say hi guys, you're my family, why not? Um, that's a pretty unique opportunity. Would you say that's the maybe the longest job you've done? Like the longest project that you've been involved with? I guess. I mean, I really can't. I mean, I was just like a main day player for so many years. It's just like a third of my work. So it was like kind of was old, reliable. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I know I'll get at least a couple of days, you know, a day or two a week from Adam and like supplement it with like other like blue bloods or what have you. Um, yeah. I will say one of the best things in front of that job was that um, Jane Fitzpatrick brought me up to AC on Little Women in Boston. Oh, okay. Which, was like such a fun experience. It was like one of those magical jobs that like, you wish you could just do over and over again. <laughs> but um, so that was really awesome. And and yeah, then honestly, kind of like once Madam was ending, I was kind of like, well, I've been wanting to do it for a while. Might as well just do it now. Like my the third man comes gone anyway. Like fuck it. <laughs> so. So are you now listed as an operator? Or are you listed as a VP? Uh, technically, i have not filed my paperwork yet. Um, I was actually uh, going to go to the office and do so when everything shut down. Nice. <laughs> like, literally on a shelf over there. I just haven't actually done it yet. Yeah. And then with the pandemic, I was sort of like, you know, let's just sort of see where things fall before we start making moves. And, but um, now that the office is sort of more opening, yeah, I need to do that soon. But no, I think I will, I think I will do it as an operator just so, you know, to get you know, because a lot of operators, especially on movies, wind up doing like second unit to be work anyway, which is like sort of awesome. So, yeah. And well, then, when you look back at some of the, I guess, the past five, 10 years of your career, would you say was there a certain position or a certain kind of connection with some people that really like stands out to you? Like when I was firsting for this amount of time or seconding for this amount of time or I don't know. <laughs> I think I really learned about seconding, um, of just sort of like being aware of what, like of anticipating people's needs and the show's needs and, you know, and I think as I operate now and DP now, that comes in really handy, like in a different way, you know, like I'm not like, oh, I just think they're going to need to battery, but like just sort of paying attention of that, like, like, I see eight cameras setting up a shot here. Now I need to anticipate what coverage they're going to need based on that. You know, so I can set up B camera over here or something. And like as a DP, um, it's a little different, but just sort of like, do, as if you, it's, it, it's more of like a, I hate that word, but it's more of like kind of a political situation, but more, yeah. but more of like, honestly, like an anthropological, like psych psychology sort of situation. Like, you know, I work with a lot of like new directors and new producers and sort of like and I'm not great at this yet and like this is definitely something like I think we're all all still working on no matter how you know advanced we are is like trying to anticipate how they'll react and what they're thinking of as important because like what I'm thinking of as important is not necessarily what the producers thinking of as important and like you know having to like try to approach them in a way that will get you what you want but also won't hit them against you either um, I feel like that's probably the most complicated part of deep meeting actually right there. <laughs> do, you feel yeah, like, sure. <laughs> do you feel like there are certain moments or maybe just certain tools that you have in your pocket now that you can say like, okay, this type of reference or this type of visual example will really like hit it home to this person? Or is it like every time you work with a new, new, new first time person, it's like learning a new language? Say every time I work on you, it's like learning new language. It will say I do have things I always reference, like um, you know, maybe not in the same manner, but like I definitely like will pull from like sometimes with the same film or some stills of like you know the same photos or 
in light of like, is this kind of what you're going for? And like, yes or no, you're like, okay, well then, no, I have like kind of these I know are sort of like, you know, I, I do feel I have like a same sort of like, not the exact same thing, but a pool that I kind of pull from every time. But I will say it's always very interesting, especially with working with um, like newer directors and producers because I make a lot of assumptions and that is always difficult because I'll say something and just not even, like, not even think about it and then like, what's that? I'm like, oh, okay. So like, you know, I'm, I think that happens a lot, especially when you get to talking about the nitty gritty of like this, like rentals and contracts and you know, all that yeah. stuff. Not you know, so much like the aesthetic stuff, more the I yeah. guess, bolts. Yeah, the aesthetic stuff I actually find, I don't have, oh, well, most of us have worked with and I have had pretty similar aesthetics, I believe, or like, you know, we haven't had, it's been the occasional miscommunication I'm saying, but like, um, we kind of mostly, I would say, get it. There are no exceptions to that, but, and, but yeah, I feel like the biggest challenge, at least with like the lower budget projects that I've been working on is like, having to explain that we need production insurance mm. to get rentals, you know? They're like, you said you have good relationships with Ari. I have an excellent relationship with them and they'll give me a lot of discounts, but like, you still need to insure them here. Yeah. Like, it's like cool. stuff like that, which like they, but then, and I do see how that is like, it's difficult because like, they would have budgeted for just, you know, whatever the price of the rental was and didn't think about that. And I'm just like, and that sometimes can make or break a budget. And then that can like cost me like anamorphics or like four lenses. And then that, that affects the aesthetic. Cause then we're having a conversation about, you know, okay, what are your priorities here then? You know, like I know you want this sweeping steady cam shot and like I was on board, but here's what we gotta do. Like you, you gotta raise more money <laughs> or we have to rethink this concept. Um, so that's always like, I think that's where the challenging part comes in, at least on the, like the budget level that I've been sort of deviating at. Um, and sometimes the results are actually better than what we had originally yeah. planned. Not always, but, but sometimes it has actually worked out great, but like, but it always gets a little testy for a second, you know? Are there any like specific memories you have of that where it really was this, deep negotiation for, I don't know, either a crane or, I don't know, for some specific piece of gear and then ended up being, like, really cool when you used it? Um, or you used something else? So, yeah, and we were going to do, I did the short a few years ago, and there was a bit of an underwater section, and I was going to actually hire an underwater operator and, like, we had, and like, we were shooting in the ocean, so we couldn't really light it, but I wanted to try to get, like, some, like, maybe, to, I could even, like, hold it down there, like, just to something, you know? Um, but, and this wasn't even really a dramatic thing, it's just, like, we realized that that was just on the budget. Um, uh, there was, but what we wound up doing, and actually, I think it turned out really interesting, because I don't think that this would have worked out as well with the normal underwater operator, is that, we got a GoPro and we, like, I had three of them and, like, you had, like, the water line in the middle, which I know is, like, sometimes really hard with normal underwater camera cows because they're so heavy. Um, so, like, that was sort of interesting. It added something, I guess, a little bit. And then I gave, like, I strapped a GoPro to, like, the actress wrist and, like, had her swim, you know? Oh, cool. so, like, there was something like, I mean, it wasn't what I envisioned, and I don't think it's what the director necessarily envisioned, but I do think that it, it did work for the story. Oh, that's really so, exciting. Yeah, so like, I think that, I mean, there wasn't really, there wasn't really a good disagreement over that. It was just sort of like, a, all right, well, here's the reality now. Let's scale back our expectations. Well, you know, when we were, we were talking a little bit before about websites and all that. Uh, I'm just curious, do you think that when people look at your work, they see like, this is Autumn, this is her aesthetic? Or do you like, do, is there a certain way that you hope that you're perceived or you think I mean, that you're seen as? I think everyone hopes they're perceived 
in a way that they want to be received. I don't know if that is always true. Um, I personally am not sure I have, I have an aesthetic, though people have told me I do. Um, like, I feel like I see other people's work, I'm like, that's clearly an aesthetic. Like, I feel I'm a little bit all over the board more. But I, I guess, like, I can kind of see, like, I have certain, like, framing conventions I do a lot. Like, you know, compositionally, I, I lean toward one more than another, maybe. Um, Lighting-wise, I never thought so, but, but people have told me I do, but I don't, I don't see it at all. Because, they, like, you know, there's just, like, a variety of, like, things, too, so. Are there other DPs that you can look at and maybe ones that you grew up watching or ones that you, or DPs that you've worked with personally where, like, you could just kind of always admire their work or? You oh, there's so many. I mean, <laughs> Deacons, obviously. I mean, I think everyone says that, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, but, like, even, like, just, like, listening to his podcast and, like, how he, like, thinks about things and I'm, like, I'm, like, oh, I'd want to grow up and be like you. <laughs> uh, but, and then, I mean, there's some beautiful ones. I forget the DP's name at the moment, but the, um, the DP who shot Amour, um, it's a French film, came out like 2008 or nine or something like that. I'm not, it was like, it's good. And so beautiful shots, like a lot of, Like, I, I, I'm approaching a job. I mean, that's so visually interesting. And, you know, nothing really it was special. Like, there's a movement, but it was so powerful. But I do feel like I, I did that a lot. I think I did that. You know, sort of less of DPs, maybe it was sort of like. I remember having a certain feeling during a scene. I'm like, I want to like sort of encapsulate that feeling in what I'm shooting but here, you know. So, um, I don't know if that's the question. Well, it did a little bit. I just the, the internet got a little fuzzy there. So yeah. I'm not sure how much of that I heard, but. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> just funny. I feel like there's certain times, whether you work in the film business or not where you're like oh that what's his name you know it's like listening to a song and you're like oh I I grew up with the song why can't I think of this album or the song title uh yeah. and so I realize that sometimes when you ask these questions it's like oh what's that name with that like sometimes it's like really burned in your memory like of course that name but there's so many there I think especially when it's um I think when it really connects to a, like an emotion or like a, a like a childhood memory of experiencing that movie it's like hard to remember the actual name of the person who made that it's just like the memory of being like, captivated by it you know that means in that respect anyway like, just across the board like i'm just bad at that game but i'll remember i'll remember the visuals and i'll remember the emotion i felt watching them so like i definitely find myself when i'm looking for references being like and see in my head, and I can't remember what movie it was or what, where it's from, or like when I saw it. Like I, I, and then I went and spending like half a day trying to figure it out and like Google imaging search. You know, I, so I feel like I, I wish I was better at that game because I it was taking all the time, honestly. Well, do you have you found that there's a certain way that you've kind of organized your visual references that's been really helpful for you, or is it kind of different per project? Um. It has been different from a project, but I, as I said, I realized how much time I waste on that stuff. And, and so I'm trying to make a better system. Like the um, Launcher app, I forget what it, or website. Shot, shot Deck? Yeah. I've been trying to use that a little bit more and like actually, instead of just looking at like actually putting things into folders so I can find them again easily. Yeah. Um, but beyond that, I've been, I, I haven't been doing this. I, I, feel like I should, I feel like I would be less intimidated. I mean, not to intimidate the right word, but less available to sort of procrastinate stuff. Like if I have it easily accessible, like 
right now I'm putting together like a lookbook or something like I know it's gonna take me like all day so like I may like push this around like I feel like that's not great like just honestly yeah. peace of mind and just whatever but um so I'm, I'm trying that's like once once I have a desk it's gonna be a different story <laughs> I have all my photo books out okay. yeah of course it's involved it's gonna be crazy yeah <laughs> um, yeah. you say, are there certain um rather than filmmakers are there certain like fine artists or still photographers or other types of artists that you've kind of always had in the back of your life as references to or do you mainly go to like if you're shooting a film or shooting a short do you always go to other like feature short like stills as reference not always um i do have a lot of stills as reference um, I'm trying to think of the particular artists that are really popular with me. Um, I should have prepared more for this. <laughs> but uh, again, there are definitely images, and more so, I use those not so much for composition, but for the colors. Like, sometimes I'd be like, this color palette in this painting or in this still, like, I really think we should put it in this section. Mm. You know? um, whereas, I think with like film clips or you know I'll more reference like movement in that so I feel like depending on what I'm trying to show I do sort of mix of the two um oh my god I'm so blanking on names I'm so sorry I'll email them to you later <laughs> that's okay well, well that maybe that will segue into um this question I've been asking everyone on my series so far which is as an industry of kind of workaholics. Yeah. Um, I'm just curious how you personally kind of maintained a sense of morale or sanity when you're working all the time versus in the COVID-19 quarantine bubble. <laughs> well, I'm not sure I maintain a sense of sanity, today, <laughs> but um, I will say it is important and I've only Sort of, like I knew that I learned this when I did full time in Madam and season two because that's basically a year of work and it was like not a hard show but certainly not an easy show either and like and that's sort of why I, I didn't want to do full time in season three I was like I'm maybe like I need to this is not healthy like yeah um, and then the past year I did like three features like back to back to back and that was great um, but they were kind of hard features and. It, toward the end of the last one, like, I found myself snapping at my eighth, like, second loader all the time. Like, oh. and he's a good friend of mine, he didn't care, but like, I was sort of like, you know what, I need to stop easy. Like, this is, you know. <laughs> um, but in terms of like DP work, I don't find it that hard to maintain enthusiasm if I'm actually enthusiastic about the project. Mm. And if I feel that. I and I feel like if I feel like the director and producer are all sort of on the same page, like I'm not having to fight with the lens of production insurance or anything like that. Like as long as like taking care of sort of like I feel like I and I, I really like and it actually even comes down to if I really like the script and the story and you know if I feel like this is something I would actually want to watch. Um, I have done a couple like short things in web series where I'm sort of like, I mean, it looks great and like I like love working with the people, but like it's not necessarily something that I would particularly, you know, be drawn to. Um, which I think is actually a really good lesson as well because you're not always going to get to choose those, you know, especially like at my level in my career, you be like starting out, you know, and then I, honestly, maybe even. ASC members like their agents gonna send them off to something that they're kind of like I don't fucking care about this like whatever, but that's the trickier part is maintaining enthusiasm and all that stuff. And I think I'm still trying to figure out the best way to do it. But I think if you, if you just look at it as like a chance, like sort of experiment, maybe with something a technique you haven't tried yet, or um, or get to know people you haven't worked with before. Um, so I always try to find something that's like attractive if I don't like love the script though I obviously always try to love the script but like if for some reason like I have to do a commercial that like I don't I'm kind of like whatever 
But like, then I'll be like, hey, you know what'd be really fun that I haven't done in a while? Let's try some circular dolly track in here or something like that. You know, like just something that like, if you can sell it, like something that just sort of is fun for you, like on a personal level or something that like you want to use on your reel. Like, you know, I don't have this type of shot in my reel. Perhaps like I can work this in somehow and, you know. Um, but I mean, I, I will say I was, like I've been DPing for a couple of years now and I will say I'm definitely getting more and more like she's just getting the script. <laughs> but, but yeah, I feel like there's always something in that other project that you can find to be enthusiastic about. Yeah. So it's easier if it, you don't have to look for it. Yeah, there definitely is a good, good start <laughs> when you can sleep easy on that and then. And then um, I guess beyond that, just in terms of like life, like, uh, I know a lot of people well, now and also in that scene that like would wrap and go right home and like they were just like sleep work, sleep work, sleep work. I totally get that. For me, I need to like go out and see like society for a second, you know, between these things. Like people are like, how are you going out for a beer every day after work? Or like, how are you going out to dinner or like running errands or something? And I'm like, I just need to feel like a normal person for a minute. <laughs> Like, and I feel like that's really important to do too, or, you know, for me, it's important to do because, you know, you don't want as much as like, your life is consumed throughout work, like you still want to be able to feel like you have free time, even if it's like you have an illusion of 15 minutes of free time. Yeah. Oh, I, I know that feeling all too well. <laughs> like, I don't think I, I, maybe when I'm older or have kids and a family or have you, um, I will be more of a work home, work home, work home person. But even then, like, I don't know. I feel like I still want to see sunlight or like a store, I don't know, something of that nature. Are there certain things that you've been doing during quarantine specifically that have helped you kind of stay connected to being, it's weird to yeah. say connected to being human, but how have oh. you been staying human during all this? No, actually both. I will say I was not happy about quarantine being. I was like a raging machine. Then I kind of leaned into it. Oh yeah. I haven't not enjoyed it. You know, like um at first I was like just trying to keep my head in the game with all the zooms and all the stuff, which I still do and I I mean you said like you can get a little zoom burnout after I compile, but like um so I think that was really cool and I, I actually really appreciate that this time off has had the opportunity for so many great DPs that I look up to and you know and art directors, there's an art director's name too, which is awesome. And like, just like so many different people that like have donated their time. And I'm like, this is so awesome. Like, we've never had the chance to do this. Yeah. To their time, or to maybe like at a festival or something, they'll do a couple, but like not really. Yeah. Um, so that's been really great. And then I've also been, <laughs> this is actually kind of funny. So I, I was doing the, the voter registration calls for the union just, you know, like, I'm just sitting on my ass, I can certainly text, like, 50 people a day, like, not a big deal, but some of the older members don't have, don't really text, so I have to call them, and I, oh, God, I forget his name, I'm like, I'm typical, um, but I, I called him, and I left a voicemail, and he called me back, apparently not listening to the voicemail, and then we went up chatting for, like, two hours. That's like, amazing. I think he was like a retired member, but like it was, it was really interesting. Um, and we chatted about really nothing about work so much, but like just it was, it was kind of nice to like randomly connect in that super strange level. That yeah, so that was sort of amusing to me. Um, and, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, yeah, it was cool. And then personally, like I've been trying to undo years of crafty, <laughs> so. Yeah, I take time. Um, yeah. Um, my cousin's a nutritionist and has been like trying to like get me to this forever. So uh, I was like, Susan, I have nothing else to do on your sake. <laughs> so um so that that's been great actually. Like I've learned to cook a little bit more. Um I've been baking a lot of soda bread. I'm not on the yeast team because like that's too complicated, but I'm just gonna do the soda bread, like that's not yeah. Um and uh yeah, I mean just kind of little things like that. Um, 
and now like trying to like as things started opening up, I'm like, okay, I have gotten to like this really awesome like workout and eating routine. Like, how do I make that? Oh, internet. Okay. Cool. Yeah, so I am, um, without having any the kind of crazy schedules, I've definitely found myself sort of being more in a routine, like I'll wake up, I'll go for a run, I'll make lunch, you know, like stuff like that, um, which I haven't hated. <laughs> and, uh, it's, and like, it's just trying to, with it, now that things are starting to open up and people are out more and et cetera, like trying to like incorporate like the sort of healthier habits I picked up during quarantine back to like set in like real life and like not be tempted by like the bag of M&M's in the corner and like just sort of, you know, try to like maintain, I feel like sort of like the self care stuff that um, we've had the time to do now yeah and you know not get so like burnt out as i think that is like you know i feel like we all learned a little bit of a lesson on that like even though we all miss work and i can't wait to get back to work but like you know there are there have been positive aspects of this as well so yeah um that's that's where i'm at i did a lot of house projects i'm sure everyone has done that so yeah but well, I, I am gonna get you to work now. Like now I'm like, all right, let's, let's Yeah. Have, I've had a couple months of vacation basically. Yeah, I think it's one thing to have, you know, two days off or two weeks off, but to have like two hundred days off is starting yeah. to get a little like Yeah. I was like good, like I was good until like mid May. I think that was cool. It's still on vacation right there. And then um yeah. 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 The change well, I want to thank you so much for your time, Autumn. I know we could keep chit-chatting, um, but I always get to that point where it's about like maybe 30, 40, 45 minutes, and I'm like, is anyone on YouTube still watching? I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. I think maybe about like other things, especially in meetings. I kind of put them all on pause. Yeah. Well, yeah. thank you so much for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. I hope we get to work on set together someday. I know, I know. I feel like as the next job, I'm be like, can you hire all my friends? I don't yeah. care. I'm sorry. Just like, just put, put on more cameras. It's gonna be great. <laughs> I know. I definitely feel that way too. Now I'm like, I want to work with just my buddies. <laughs> like everyone, just bring them all on. Yeah, that's fine, right? <laughs> okay. Thanks a lot. Um, I'll talk to you later. Okay.